final score, 28 to 25, Seattle Seawolves win it, Western Conference champions heading to San Diego next week to play the New England Free Jacks. Exceptional game crew, exceptional game. I have to say, looking at the game, it was a tale of two halves, truly. The first half, Dallas, it belonged to them. They came out strong, they came out fast, and they were gritty, aggressive, tough, and strong. I feel that Dallas really put it, put Seattle on their heels at the beginning of this match. And I say that because they were dominant in their scrums. They were fast, they were physical. They were taking advantage of the set pieces and just moving the ball with so much flow and fluidity and just really swinging it around the field. And for the better part of the first half, they were in the Seattle, um, on the Seattle side of the field and they were taking advantage and scoring points. For a while, I'll, I'll go over the stat line here in a second and look at the try scored, what minutes, and the entire breakdown of the overall game. Um, but D Dallas came out strong, fast, and they were looking like, you know, it was going to be a long day for Seattle is what it was looking like but ringing in the second half this is where Seattle turned it on and they really clawed and fought back in and they looked like they started to gel and put it together as a unit they were you know how how consistent how fluid Dallas looked in the first half that's exactly how Seattle looked in the second half they were moving the ball the flow was there the effortlessness was there and they were taking advantage of the line breaks. As I was sitting in the back end zone and watching uh, plays develop, I would see Max swing it out, JP running, you know, JP Smith, hell of a match. That dude played incredible today. I just do have to say, it was just on the top of my mind. But as I was sitting here watching the sets and pieces happen, Seattle did a very good job of exposing the gaps and taking advantage of it and hitting the hole hard and getting past the gain line and finding those meters tooth and nail. The wings for Seattle did exceptionally well getting open, finding those gaps, goose step and hesitation steps, creating an off-balance step and really making the plays happen and forcing their will on Dallas in that second half. But the crazy part happened, man. Dallas took advantage and they took the lead. I think the, I believe the 74th minute. I'll look at the stats and get all that. So it was looking bleak for Seattle within the, the within five minutes left in the match, and it was like just a nail biting. You could feel the the tension, the nerves from the Seattle crowd was deathly quiet, and the Dallas side was elated. But somehow, some way, man, Seattle pulled it from the grips of death. Mac swings it all the way from this side of the pitch probably like close to where I'm standing, all the way to the left side. A line break happens, and then Seattle just sprints down the field. I think he gained, it had to be 40, 50 meters, and um, you know, swings it to the, to the inside, inside offload, straight line to the try, loan, try zone, scores it. Seattle takes the, takes the lead, 26 to 25. They get the conversion, Mac converts it beautifully, and there we have it, crew. That was the end of the match. And Dallas had it right here within the within the 22 meter um, area. But Seattle created the turnover right here on the left side of the pitch. Got got the or excuse me, got the scrum awarded to him. Game set match. Smoke flying in the air. People crying, screaming, cheering. And I just have to give a massive shout out to both of these sides today because Dallas brought in an incredibly strong side. Their fan base was, was great. They showed up, they travel well. Seattle showed up. You already know Seattle showed up. The crowd was packed. The energy was here. And these men, I say it all the time, but they left it all out on the field. Dallas was looking like the stronger team in the first half. But Seattle became that second, that second half team, and they just really put it on and put their foot on the pedal, took their took their first lead, and you know gave it up near the end. But then somehow, some way, they found that they found that that grit, and they dug deep, and they won themselves a chance to go play for the championship in San Diego to be their third shield if they win it, crew. But I love this match, exceptional, exceptional. Let's look at some of the stat line. I'll go with. Um, the, the try scored first, and I'm using the website Ultimate Rugby, so I have to give a shout out to the MLR Reddit community. I asked this week where was a good site that had all the up-to-date stats where we could check out some of the more in-depth details on the statistics, and they led me to this one, Ultimate Rugby. So we're gonna look at the score line here. The, in the third minute, Wandy Oliver had a kick at goal for Dallas. Um, it put, gave them 3-0 lead, then Mac, 
missed the penalty at the um, at the seven minute mark, so it was still 3-0. Then we just had Dallas sort of go on a tear. The 12th, 13th, and 23rd minute, so there was a try at the 12th minute by Nick by Nick Ben of Dallas. The conversion was good by Juan at the 13th minute. And the 23rd minute, that's when Dallas was given a yellow card. Juan Pablo Zeiss, and I apologize if I say the name wrong, please correct me. He was, a, he was given a yellow card. So the penalty try at the 23rd minute was given to the Seattle Seawolves. And um, from there, at the 23rd minute, another yellow card was given to McKean for Dallas. So they were two men down. I know I said it in the in the vlog, they were a man down, but they were two men down, now they realize. But Juan had a kick at goal at the 30 minute mark, and it looks like he converted it, or no, he missed it. Then at the 31st minute, Mahanri, and I apologize if I messed the name, he was a, given a yellow card for Seattle. Then this is when, uh, at the 32nd minute, they took advantage of the yellow card. Nick Ben from Dallas scored the try. The conversion was good by Juan. And uh, Joe, uh, at the 36th minute, scored a try. Mac converted. And at the 50th minute, Juan, uh, JP Smith, got the try at the 50th minute, going into half. Mac with the conversion. And, um, you know, that's when it was, it was a still a tightly contested match, I believe. And uh, the scores aren't given to me on Ultimate Rugby, so I'm, I apologize that I'm able, not able to give you the, the score line no, just off the top of my head. Coming out into the second half, we had, um, well, excuse me, coming out in the second half, excuse me, JP scored at the 50th minute. Mac had the conversion. 68th minute, Juan D. Oliver. He missed the penalty at the 68th minute. Connor Grindle, uh, the 73rd minute, had the try for Dallas. And then at the 74th minute, Juan missed the try. This was that nail-biting moment when Dallas took the lead 25 to 21. And this is when it was looking bleak. You look at this crew, 73rd minute, uh, they, they get the try. 74th minute, they get the conversion. And then Seattle, they, get, they do the reset. And man, they, they put all like what are you, all hands on deck, so to speak. This is when you know they, Seattle swung it all the way from what is as I'm looking this way, the right side of the pitch all the way to the left, found the line breaks, and was able to convert the try. Ryan Reese with the try at the 79th minute. Ryan Reese with the the 79th minute try, the conversion by Sam Windsor, game over incredible match what a hell of a game uh, of rugby both of these sides should be incredibly proud of themselves they put it on and made a spectacle and a showcase now if i'm looking at the stat line of this match this should this should be the up-to-date stats and my team will update it uh, once we get the more once we get the you know the finalized stats but 28 to 25 is the final score four tries to three tries Seattle had that advantage successful conversions two to two so they were even in that department and I'm using the MLR app for these um, for these stats right here successful penalty goals Dallas had two compared to the zero that Seattle had for territory 58 territory for um, for Seattle compared to the 42 that Dallas had so as I'm thinking about it, as I'm watching the game like I said is the, the first half I felt like the Jackals were in Seattle ter territory the majority of the first half but the second half that's where things flipped where Seattle was in the Jackals territory for that half so we have 58 uh, to 42 Seattle winning that one as far as possessions 57 possessions for Seattle compared to the 43 from Dallas tackles made 85 for Seattle, 130 for the Jackals. And I know you mentioned in the video before I said, uh, you know, it showed to the advantage because the defense of the amount of tackles made, but you all made a great point saying, you know, if the ball isn't in your hands, that's what, it may not be the advantage having that many tackles. And that was a very valid point. And so as I'm learning these stats more and more, I'm getting more well acquainted with how rugby works. But as far as we have it right here, I'm just gonna say um, Dallas won that advantage as far as more, ta more tackles, 130 tackles compared to 85. Scrums won, they were even, six and six. Lineouts won. This is the Jackals had the advantage, ten to eight. Turnovers won, four to two. Seattle had that advantage. Clean breaks, two to two. Both were incredibly even at this. Like I said, it was anybody's match at that point. And that last clean break for Seattle was the deciding clean break to win the match. So they did it when it counted, and you know just did it with no time on the clock so Dallas couldn't answer back and that was just a monumental and pivotal moment of this game and I think this game is going to go down as one of those instant classics I would call like an instant MLR rugby classic for me 
Handling errors, seven to eight. So eight mishandles from, from the Dallas Jackals, seven to Seattle. Tackles missed, 21 tackles missed compared to eight. Dallas Jackals missed 21 tackles, eight for Seattle Seawolves. And um, it didn't feel like that when I was watching the match. Now that I'm thinking about, like I was talking about like these line breaks happening, the wings from Seattle did an exceptional job of evading the tackles. They were elusive, they were quick, incredible hesitation steps, and just were able to find enough space once they, once they would, well, just like I say a juke crew, but like a hesitation step, a goose step, they were able to put the Dallas defenders on their heels, and that's what caused those missed tackles. So 21 to eight in that department. Um, line outs lost, two for Seattle, three for Dallas. Yellow cards, two for Dallas, one for Seattle, and then zero red cards for both sides. But overall, man, what an exceptional match. This is just, man, an electric atmosphere. It was nail biting. Every moment was so much fun to watch. And I was sitting there on the edge of my seat, man, just like, how is this thing gonna turn out? How is it gonna turn out? And I just, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be out here in Seattle. Had the chance to connect with Jericho, who works at the main office of MLR in Dallas. So I'll be seeing her next week. I've been working with her and um, the MLR headquarters. So they're gonna get me out there to Seattle and we're gonna cover the, the championship next week. And I just always have to give a shout out to the entire Seattle organization from the top down. Absolutely incredible, open. They just welcome me with open arms. It's always a warm greeting, friendly hug, and I uh, just love them so much. And um, man, I'm just so grateful to be here and in this world of rugby with you. And I know I say it all the time, but I just have to because I'm only here because of you. And I'm doing this because of all of your incredible support. You give me so much energy, so much life, and add so much texture and fun to my life. Rugby was one of those things that just happened out of the blue. My boy Josh Munn hit me up, and when Lewis Reese came over to the NFL, did a video, and it just ended up taking off and changed the entire trajectory of my life and my business, QSN. And um, if you didn't know, we were a gaming company, but we're now full-time in the world of rugby, and that's because of you, and it just feels like home. It feels like home. I, did, I know I did not play rugby. I played American football growing up, but athletics, sports is in my lineage. It's in my culture. It's in embedded inside of me. So I know what it is to be an athlete, what it takes to play at the highest level and to compete. And um, just rugby has exposed me to so many different facets that I was never exposed to, just like the friendship, camaraderie, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, because women play rugby as well. And just the entire family aspect of rugby is beautiful to watch. And I'm so grateful to be here and grateful to have you in this journey crew. But that'll do it for this analysis. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Next week is going to be a very tough match. New England Free Jacks, they had a great match against the Chicago Hounds last uh, yesterday, pulled out pulled out that win, and um, we just had another tough match today with Seattle versus Dallas. So I'll come with my, my prediction later in the week, and um, I'll be in Seattle later this week, but I'll give you all the updates and everything as we go, crew. I love you. I appreciate you. In our descriptions below, drop into our Discord to connect in the QSM pub where we talk shop man we just have fun talk family life rugby share pictures updates all that good stuff and i would love to see you in there and talk to you and uh, just continue to connect through i love you i appreciate you always stay laser focused on your dreams and your vision and remember that you're in control i love you crew peace